Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I want to, want to welcome you to church this morning. I pray that the power of the Lord will touch you and your life will never remain the same. In the name of Jesus. And for those logging on to be part of this service, thank you so much for being part of our service today. We pray that the power of the Lord will reach out to you. His word will touch you and there will be unusual transformation in your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. So please get your Bibles, get your notes, and be seated to be blessed. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. What joy to be in God's presence this morning. So how was our week? How far is August so far? Hallelujah. All right, so we are starting uh, a new series. And this one we have titled The Gospel Project. Um, so this is not a preaching uh, message. It's a teaching message. Okay. And it's important because we just want to remind us of what, you know, was packaged. You know, what, what came with the salvation that we have received. You know, they call it follow come. It came with it. It came with the package. And why is it important that we remind us? Because it's possible that we are forgotten. If you are a pilot or you work in aviation, okay, because I have few pilots as friends, they're always going to do some kind of refresher course, you know, and doing their certification over and over again. Um, because just like your phone, your phone upgrades you know, update itself. Um, the makers of the phone will send you updates, and they ask you to allow the update so that your, your phone or your technology device can now be up to state. So that's what we want to share with us this morning and maybe throughout this week. Um, John chapter 3, I read from verse 1 to 6. John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6. John chapter 3, from verse 1 to 6. Many of us are aware of this story. Just want to go through it one more time. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So it looks like there was a mention of being born again in this particular passage. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. May the Lord bless his words. You know, it's surprising that there are lots of Christians today who do not know Christ. They do not know the Christ that they confess. And so it's not surprising the kind of life that they are subjected to. They say they are Christians. Because the process of being a Christian, okay, it's a simple process. And one of the things I found out is that, you know, things that people cannot hold, things they can't handle, it's difficult for them to connect and relate with it. That's why they go to Babalao, and Babalao must give you something physical. When it gives you something, there is an unusual confidence that comes with it. And then give you incantations to read. Or give you some things that you should follow. 
And so when you get <laughs> to the house or whatever, and you, you follow the protocol, because then your faith is connected to that which you can see. When you cannot see, when you cannot hold, it's difficult for many people to connect with it. That's why there are a lot of things that we have mystified. As long as we cannot connect with it, it's, it's, not, it's not real. So these people who call themselves Christians have not subjected their opinions and their values to the authority of God's word. They haven't. And so that's where the struggle is. You know, if I ask us a question this morning, if I ask, so what's the meaning of being born again? I can guarantee you that we get as many diverse, you know, opinions as possible. If I ask what exactly is salvation, it's also difficult because you find out that a lot of people have different interpretations of salvation. So if I say what exactly is the gospel message, it's also difficult. That's why it's difficult for us to share the message with someone else, especially people who are not of our faith. So imagine there's this billionaire that you admire or who likes you. He likes you so very much. He lives in the finest part of the city. Let's assume Banana Island, Abby, because that's what people can relate with. And then he asks you to come to his house as often as you like. In his house, he has cooks. You can eat what you like. Okay? In fact, not only that, he enjoys having you around. Every time you come around, there's this unusual, you know, glow that you see in his face. He's, he's happy to see you. How many of us will mention him to our friends? How many of you will mention him to our friends? Because you want to brag about him. And when you are going, you don't go empty-handed. You carry, he gives you something. There are people like that. You don't go empty-handed when you go to their house. Now, my father, he won't go to church, but when the pastor comes, the pastor must hang, must hang, must look for something. If he doesn't have the money, he will ask my mommy to borrow him. There are people like that. So just imagine that kind of a person, influential, powerful, and rich, and he enjoys having you around. There's a high likelihood that you mention him to as many people that you come in contact with. In fact, you brag about him. That is the kind of relationship we have with the Father. You don't understand it. <laughs> oh, my God. So when, when we're worshiping this morning, um, so it's a struggle. Some people just stand. They don't understand. Some people just try. They don't understand. And that's just what we want to remind you this morning. To remind you of what the gospel message means. What happened when you gave your life to Christ? And because the truth is, there are many Christians who are suffering. They are running from pillar to post. They haven't been able to get a handle on their lives. They don't understand what life is all about. Yet they said Christians. They call themselves Christians. And then people who say they are Christians, they are looking at them and mocking them. doesn't mean that you're not born again. You're born again. But it looks like you don't understand the concept of being born again. That's what I want to share this morning. And maybe throughout the rest of this month. So there's a kingdom. The day you said, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior, you became part of that kingdom. That kingdom is ruled and governed by Christ. You became part of that kingdom. It's an invisible kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom that you can see. It's not Igbo tribe. It is not Yoruba tribe. It's not Awusa Fulani. It's invisible, but it is real. So when you gave your life to Christ, you became part of that kingdom. Christ is the head of that kingdom. And it's a powerful kingdom. Check through scriptures, especially the Old Testament, New Testament. See, the people who were of God, there is an unusual dimension that they operated in. You know, Nicodemus, like we read, it's, it's, it, was a, it was a, I don't like to use it, was. And because as far as I'm concerned, they are not dead, they are alive. They are still with us, they are still speaking. 
The Bible said that he was a Pharisee and a member of the ruling council. In fact, theologians believe that he was the third richest person in Jerusalem in his days. So he came to Jesus in the night. The reason why he came in the night, only God knows. Maybe he doesn't want people to see him. But obviously, he's been following Jesus because he saw something unusual about this man. And then he wanted to be part of it. So he, come, he came in the evening and was asking questions. And that's what we read in John chapter 3. How Nicodemus came in the night and was asking questions. And then Jesus ignores his questions and then told him what exactly he needed to hear. So we belong to a kingdom. You are born into that kingdom. You are born into that kingdom. You don't belong to that kingdom by association. You are born into it. In America, they said, if you are born in America, you become an American citizen. Even if you are Indian, you are Yoruba, you are Igbo. Am I correct? You become American citizenship. Just like that. Or maybe if you are born on board an American airline. Am I correct? I think they have changed the rules for Nigeria. I don't know if it's still true for Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. And because now they don't, because, yeah, we've been going there to give birth, just to get some kind of second citizen for our kids, and they're changing the rules because they understand what's going on. So you can become American citizen by changing your nationality. You marry them, and then you can go through, or you become a permanent resident, and over many periods of time, this one you cannot you are born into the kingdom of God. Do you understand what that means? You are born into that kingdom. So it's a kingdom, even though you cannot see it, but it's so real and so very powerful. I just want to show you the dynamics of the things that happen in that kingdom. So what now is the gospel? Because we, we're talking about the gospel project. The gospel is the message concerning the lordship of who? Of Jesus Christ. The lordship of Jesus Christ. The lordship of Jesus Christ. When you gave your life to Christ, he became your lord and your savior. It's not because you're going to church. Something happened. You submitted. So when you say you're American citizen, it means that especially if you live in the United States, you are subject to the rules and the Constitution of America. And in my findings, American Constitution is very small compared to Nigeria. Very simple. Am I correct? Very simple compared to Nigeria. You know, we have a way of complicating things. So when you become part of the kingdom, you are subject to the rules, the policies, or what they call the Constitution, which guides the nation. If you don't change the Constitution of a nation, you cannot change a nation. Because that's what guides them. So it is... The message concerning. So it's a message concerning the lordship of Jesus, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of Jesus and salvation. How to enter into the kingdom. That's the message of the gospel. The lordship of Jesus, his kingdom, and how to enter salvation. That's the message of the gospel. So you see, they are always preaching Jesus and the kingdom of God. Preaching Jesus and the kingdom of God. For what, to, what end, um, to what end? So that we can receive that message and make a decision. And make a decision. Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to what? The gospel is powerful enough to bring you salvation. It's a powerful kingdom. See, 
if it's not transforming, if it cannot bring you salvation, then it's not the gospel. Because the gospel has the power to bring what? Salvation. He said, for who? To everyone who believes. For the Jews and also for the Greek. So it's about believing. And then there is a power that's given to you to become a child of God. So a Christian moves into a house and is afraid that demon lives in the house. A Christian goes into a bus and they say there is a witch there. We haven't understood the message yet. So in the passage that we read, um, Nicodemus came to Jesus and um, he was asking him questions. Um, can we look at that scripture? John chapter 3. John chapter 3 from verse 1. So there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, verse 2. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you see that um, Jesus ignores whatever he was saying and then told him, See, there is a kingdom. And for you to enter into the kingdom, you have to be born again. And it's amazing that a ruler of the Jews, a rich man, and probably a powerful religious leader didn't understand the concept that Jesus was talking about. You know why? It's possible for us to be in church and not understand the gospel for 20 years. Are you listening to me? It's possible. And so a person is seeking deliverance every other week. What happened to you? Hey, have you gone for deliverance? Go for deliverance. And then every month or every other month, he's going for deliverance. My pastor once told the story. He said he was doing deliverance and doing deliverance. Then he got to realize that it's the same people who are coming for deliverance. Ah. <laughs> it's the same people. So he said he stopped. Ah. What happened? Why are, you, why, are you, why are you waiting for the devil, devil to enter you before you come for deliverance again? But because it's the programming is what we've been told. Come for deliverance, come for deliverance. Is there anything wrong with deliverance? No. But our concept of deliverance is warped. Something is wrong with it. So Nicodemus came, and then he had a conversation with the Lord Jesus. So Jesus said that you cannot enter except you are born of water and of the Spirit. The born of water is the biological birth. So you cannot become born again if you're not a human being. You have to be born first into this nature. Are you with me? And then you can now be born of God. You cannot be born again except you, he said, first of water and of the spirit. He said, that which is of the flesh is flesh. That which is of the spirit is spirit. That's why spirit cannot be born again. I've told a class before. Demons are disembodied spirits. They lost their bodies. But there are fallen angels who still have their bodies. And that's why the fallen angels who still have their bodies are the ones who shows up in places physically. And they can manifest themselves like an angel of light. Some of us think that Satan, God has, you know, this empowered Satan with all the, all the glory and everything he gave him. No. He hasn't collected it back. What happened is that that thing has been compromised. It's now corrupt. But that Satan cannot disguise himself as an angel of light. No. It's in the Bible. The Bible says he can disguise himself like an angel of light. So the demons who have lost their bodies are the one 
who seek to possess human beings. Why do they possess human beings? Because human beings is the highest class in, human, in God's creation. They can live in dogs, they can live in birds, hmm, no problem. But they prefer human beings. Have you noticed? Every time Jesus casts them out, they are always looking for where to stay. And they went into the pigs. Am I correct? They're always looking for where to possess. Is it possible that I have the Holy Spirit <laughs> and then demon comes to live inside of me? Is it possible? You don't have the answer. Can, can you imagine? <laughs> as long as you're not convinced. You know what they call conviction? As long as you're not convinced. See, let's, 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 let's jawalak what you, yo. Let's leave the ogbono that's not drawing. Let's put okra on the fire. The guy who believes so much in, uh, what do you call it? What is it? Jihad. Would die for jihad. Have you seen them die for jihad? That's what they call conviction. Huh. That's why our world, our world is messed up. Okay, so this, this, this person has been pursuing, has pursuing your dream, has pursuing your dream, and you have done deliverance. They have not stopped pursuing. What are you going to do about it? I've told you before. Then you are going somewhere, and somebody saying, mm, okay. yesterday, yesterday I, saw, I saw a small video on Instagram. Um, a lady was, was well, she was eating or something like that, and then she had a sound. I'm sure some of you have seen it. And then she started the sound, and then she started praying. And then he said, there is nothing you can do about me. And then, then she stopped. And then the thing made sound again. He said, she, then she ran. <laughs> so you can speak in tongue out of fear. It's possible. You can pray out of fear. It's not out of conviction. So your, faith, your tongue doesn't go anywhere. You're not convinced. There's something that has been taken away from the gospel message. We will not raise Christians who are not up there, who are half baked. If you're half baked, it's dangerous for you because you enlisted in a army that you're not trained to become part of. The moment you give your life to Christ, Satan, you make you a target. And it's not difficult. These things are not, it's not difficult. So most of us, I gave my life to Christ many times, just in case you don't know. Many times. I became born again, I became unborn again. I became born again, I became unborn again. So you're always born in again alone until you become overborn. You know, you, you're not even... <laughs> Every of those experiences, there was no conviction. There is a time you get to where I'm done. Are you with me? I want to break this as simple as possible. Because it's, we need to understand it. Oh my God. In this new equation, the Bible says that the, um, the cover, that they used to cover the inner, innermost temple in those days, the holies of holies, the Bible says it tore from the top to the bottom. And the presence that was there did not we don't just have access. Now that presence came out of that place and came into us. The same presence that the holies of holies, that the high priest is afraid to enter. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? That was what happened. Anyone looking at you? You are, you are superhuman. Oh my God. If somebody stand up here now and say, I am a witch. Some people will step back, including Christians. What makes a witch witch? Disembodied spirit inside him. Disembodied spirit that they defeated several years. Several. <laughs> That's what makes a witch witch. They say your wife is a witch. Your wife is a witch. What makes her witch? It's the spirit that's inside of her. 
If you are a man that you cast out the demon, you do deliverance for her, she becomes your wife, your good wife, and you fill her with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? That's, what, that's, what, that's, that's, that's the testimony of a Christian. Leaving your wife because she's a witch, you're not a Christian yet. I would say that this science will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? What do you believe? So it is the message of the gospel that you hear and you make a decision to be part of Christ, to be part of God's kingdom. It's that message. It's the good news of the message of the kingdom of God, of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, and salvation that we heard. And then we made a decision by faith. By faith means this thing is real, even though you can't see it. I'm trying to help you this morning. Because you know why I'm, we're emphasizing on these things? It will be unfortunate for us to be part of a household like white olive. And in seven years, in five years, in seven years, you are still looking for prophets. Something is wrong with you. That is not how it is designed. You are a prophet. You are on the same level. His own is for office, is for responsibility. Your own is for reigning in life. Are you listening to me? So what is salvation then? What is salvation? Okay, so can someone remind me, what did I say is, is the gospel? So let's go. One, two, go. The message of the Lordship of Jesus Christ is kingdom and eternal salvation. So now, what is, what is salvation? What is it to be born again? Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let us read verse 8 to 10. Can you please ever describe this video? But what does it say? The word is near you. The word is in your mouth. And... In your heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Go on. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Simple. If you believe with your heart, with your heart, the Lordship of Jesus, that he is the Lord, and then, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He said that God raised him from the dead. So, before God raised him from the dead, it means that you believe that he died for you. Okay? And then God raised him from the dead. And then you say, it. what does it mean? I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he died for me. I believe he was raised for me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Salvation. Is it that simple? Yes. <laughs> Is it that simple? Yes. Remember what happened in the wilderness? When the serpent beat the people, and then God gave Moses instruction. He said he should put a snake on the cross. I mean, you know, on the tree. And then what did he say? What, did, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? Just look. <laughs> he said, they will not die. And that was a difficult thing for people. Just look. How can I be looking at a snake that beat me? And I will not die. As simple as it is, it was difficult for people because people died in their thousands. How many believers do we have in this place today? You believe Jesus is the Lord. You believe that Jesus raised them from the dead. then you're a believer. That is salvation. A person is saved. Now, what is being born again? 
Now, what is being born again? Being born again is the regeneration of your spirit, your human spirit. The regeneration of your human spirit. Regeneration. Not refurbished, not panabited and sprayed. Regeneration of the human spirit. So that was why Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So it is to be regenerated in your human spirit, and it, initiated, it is initiated by faith through the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. That is being born again. That is being born again. Your spirit was regenerated. Unfortunately, because it is spirit, it's difficult for people to reconnect. It's difficult for people to connect. It's not physical. So when you become born again, it doesn't mean that the debt you are owing has been paid. It doesn't mean that your body that pains you has been healed. It doesn't mean that certain issues that you have in your life are, are gone. No, they are still there. But something happened. You cannot see it with your physical eyes. It happened in the realm of the spirit. You were born of God. If you don't understand anything that I've said today, just understand that you were born of God. That's all. You can build on that one. They call something anointing. Because what we are looking for men of God is the anointing. The anointing is the effect of the presence. The anointing is the effect of the presence. What you see around the person who carries the presence. Guess what? First John chapter 2, verse 27, that we read this morning, says that you have an anointing if you have the Holy Spirit. You too, you have what? You have an anointing. You have the anointing. Can you look at that scripture? First John um, chapter 2, verse 27. He said, We have the anointing. Ah, holy God, help us. But the anointing which you have received from him abides where? In you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it taught you, you will abide in him. The way the New Testament is designed, you're not supposed to be consulting anybody. Are you with me? You are self-generating. You, you carry the generator that produced the anointing. Is somebody listening to me? Several years ago, I was asking God, put unusual anointing in my life. Anoint my tongue. Let me declare. Because what? I, I saw how Jesus did have to cast out a demon more than once. And those days, I was doing deliverance, and sometimes some demons are very difficult. <laughs> you cast them out. They said, it's only my leg that's out. The rest of my body is inside. You do another. He said, only the two legs are out. My hand is inside. You're struggling and struggling. He <laughs> said, God, ah. you know what happened oftentimes? It's because we haven't gotten to the death. So you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, before I put my anointing on you, I must make you like me. See, you cannot represent the person you don't know. You're an ambassador of Nigeria in the United States. When there's a problem in Nigeria, it is the ambassador the first ask. Am I correct? Call me the ambassador of Nigeria. What happened to American citizens in Nigeria? If he doesn't have information, he's in trouble. So that means he must have information. He must know What's going on in this country? Are you with me? You can't represent the person you don't know. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, you are angry. You can declare a thing, and then it can happen. Ha! I say, oh. So it means that if I'm angry, say, yeah, and then something will happen to the person. Straight. 
Is that no problem? I say, fire catch you. And then right there, a person catches fire. Ah! Have you not seen that before in African magic? <laughs> it can happen. That's why Jesus will not have to say something more than once because he's, been, he's fully tempered by the Spirit. Any message you are hearing that doesn't turn you into that dimension is fake. Any message that makes you still dependent on pastors, dependent on prophets, dependent on evangelists, dependent on this, you can't access the presence of the Father yourself and receive grace for help. It's a fake message. Something is wrong with it. You have an anointing in you. You don't need anyone to teach you the anointing. Yeah, you can come to church. Yes, we can teach you how to use it. But he said, when it comes to this, this you said, you carry it yourself. I hope somebody will leave this, to, this place today. I'm going to call all the village, all the witches in your village and say, hey, come here. God punish you today. That's what the gospel says. So there are lots of Christians who are suffering in finances. They are struggling in their relationship. They are suffering in their career. They are oppressed. They are tossed to and fro by all sorts of things. They, don't, they, 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 they react the same way the rest of the world is reacting. Why? And they said they are, they are Christians. And then they are expecting God to do something about it. No, God's not going to do something about it. You are the one that will do something about it. Are you listening to me? If you are suffering as a child of God, it's not God. It is you. It's not God. There is nothing else he needs to give you that you don't have. Are you listening to me? So if you carry it, they don't tell you. You just bought a car, a Ferrari. And then you put it on Lagos Road, maybe a third mainland bridge. And then you want to go to 250 kilometers per hour. A person will kill themselves, especially if you don't understand the car, because cars are different from cars. Some of us, we carry the energy. You carry a 225 kVA generator, and you're using it to hang on your thruster. The one you should use to power everywhere. Let them know there's a generator here. And you know what? The generator malfunctions. It will soon spoil if it's not carrying the adequate road. Are you listening to me? So you shouldn't suffer. You shouldn't be struggling. In that your shop, they should know that if they get your shop, they must excuse you because you're not part of the crowd. Are you listening to me? If you've always, they've always carried you with the crowd, it's because you have not distinguished yourself. So I was doing deliverance some few years ago, and this brother was going through an experience. And he was struggling. He was struggling. He had become born again for more than five years. Things were not moving. He just struggled. And he's serving in church. He's available in church and all that. And so he came, he wanted to know, you know. So we're sharing the gospel. And then I, I took him through that, that experience, understanding the New Testament, new creation realities. Okay, new creation realities. You know what? And I pray with him. He went, he left, and then when I saw him, things have changed. Things have changed. He was on his way to progress. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, <laughs> he said, I confronted the devil of my father's household. In other words, there's a power that keeps people small, and that power kept him small, even though he was a child of God. And then light came. Light came. Say light came. came. And then he stood and made that declaration. And prayed. And only God knows what he did. And like play, they just say, okay, this one has found out. Is that what they say? They left him. As from today, your story has changed. Amen. Every part that has terrorized you up till now, they lost their hold. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
why you, you are supernaturally natural. You carry a presence. The power of the Lord is working in you. You are now a child of God. Let me just show you one scripture before we go. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Bible says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He has delivered us from where? I don't care whether the power of Satan is in Jews, is in Israel, is in my village, is in Onomi, Onomi. He said he has delivered us from where? From the power of darkness. And then does what? Conveyed us. You know what he means to convey? Like a conveyor belt moves you into the kingdom of what? Ah! Hallelujah. Amen. So that's what happened. That was what happened. If you ruminate, regular, meditate on the scripture, it will get to a point that you'll be looking for trouble in your father's family. Let me give you an example. See, when pastors do deliverance, the confidence is that we carry something. Are you listening to me? You that is coming for deliverance, you don't have the confidence. The man who is doing deliverance, he's a human being like you, but he knows that he's not human. And he believes that when he utters his voice, in the name of Jesus, with confidence, with faith, something must happen. That was what happened. That's what normally happens. That's, 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 that's how we do deliverance. Unfortunately, if you're delivered, you don't have faith, you don't have belief. You don't know the story Jesus gave. He said, you live here. He said, you live there. The demon will come back after going all over the place. They didn't know, they, they don't have a place to stay. Then they remember their former address. Their former address is that person. And then he comes and check and find out that the place is clean. Better than the way he left it. Bible says he's so smart, he will not come alone. Human beings are foolish. He said he's so smart, he will not go and look for senior who are more wicked than that demon. And just imagine the power of association of demons. They come and whoop that person up. They stay there. The deliverance that happened, the first one, will not fix this one. Because there are several. Remember the story of a man, Jesus, what's your name? He said, we are legion. How did the legion of demons enter a human being? They chained him. They caught it like this. You know, it's difficult for us to comprehend. Have you seen people under the influence of Colorado? You know Colorado, the drug they, they take? I saw a human being, a boy, twist himself like rubber under the influence. Blood all over the place, but he didn't know what's going on. That's the demon operating. So what is chain? He would tear it like this. He couldn't live among human beings. He was living in the cemetery. Because that's the place that is calm for him. So he delivered you from the kingdom of darkness. We were under the kingdom of darkness. You have a funny dream. Somebody said they have a dream about you. Somebody said they send a message. Not me. You can't, have a, you can't have a dream about a spirit being like me. You can't have a dream. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. First John 5, 1 John 5.1. Let me round it up, and then we'll continue from there next week. First John 5, 1 John 5.1. Come on, read this together. One to go. Whoever believes that Jesus is... Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him who is begotten. You are what? Born of God. That was what happened. Born again is being born of God. You, were, you are now born in the nature of God. See, I, I can't run away from trouble. Just imagine, you have issues, you're not coming to me. Who should I take you to? Another pastor. Will you not be wondering what happened to me? Would I hear? Is it that Jesus' answer? Or we all 
the idea. See, when you have that kind of approach to anything in your life, Satan knows how to respect you. So there should not be darkness around you. Your business should not fail. Once in a while, you should learn to conjure spirits. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits sent for to minister for us. Hair of salvation. Some of us know, even know, you don't even know that there's an angel that has your name at the back. So he's been standing and waiting for you to send him, and you don't even know that you have angels. You are running all over the place looking for deliverance and prayer meetings. Are you listening to me? I've been saying this thing, and it bothers me, that a person will leave where to live and go to another church, and the person has been in where to live for three years, four years, and then the new church, they are not recognizing that there's something about you. I failed in my assignment. I failed. When you go anywhere, they should be able to say, ah, there's something about this person. Where are you coming from? You say, where to live? They say, oh... If you're not producing Christians, you're producing something else. Christians that Jesus cannot use. So that, that's why everywhere, you see, everywhere, we can't even pray to God for God to change anything. Because we're so dependent. We don't understand the gospel that we carry. You are translated from the kingdom of darkness. You are no more under the hold of Satan. You can deal with any issue in life. There's nothing else God needs to give you. If you're suffering, you are suffering for nothing. That was why James said, if anyone is suffering, he said, <laughs> what did he say you should do? Pray. He didn't say, go to me, come and meet me. He said, do what? Pray. The answer is in the word. I declare over your life today. Mahari batush talabia. Embrodovo shintaraba sentalia. The Bible says, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I declare over your life, over your life, your life, I declare you moving forward now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything that has pressed break in your life, I declare brick failure now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That the environment that you live that is limiting destinies of people, that house that you live that is frustrating destinies of people, I declare today, as you go into that house, as you return back to that environment, the light of Christ flood that environment. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every darkness around you, today they are dispelled in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You are filled with the light. Amen. That's why Jesus said we are the light of this world. As long as we are in this world, we are the light of this world. I therefore declare, arise and shine now. Amen. For the light of Christ is inside and upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your business that's struggling today receives the life of God. No more struggle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your finances is transformed. Amen. Your finances is transformed. Amen. Your career enjoys a new life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father in heaven. Lord, is there anyone here today that has been kept small by ancestral hold? Bible says we are born of God, so our ancestry changed. Anyone operating under a closed heaven, anyone operating under a curse, spoken to you from anywhere, as the Lord lives, I declare in the name that is above every other name. Bible says at the mention of his name, every knee bows of things in heaven and earth and under the ground, including the curses and ancestral hood. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, they are terminated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bible says, whosoever Jesus, the Son of God, makes free, is free indeed. He's free indeed. I therefore declare in the name of Jesus, you are free. Amen.
from the hold of Satan, you are free. From the suffering, you are free. From the power of oppression, you are free. From the power of depression, you are free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, this week, God's angel will minister to you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, amazing Father. Lift up your hands and magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. Marita we bless you, Holy Father. We glorify and exalt your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for someone in this service. You want to make a decision for Jesus. I've just explained what salvation means and what it means to be born again. And you've just heard the gospel. The message of the Lordship of Jesus is kingdom and how to receive salvation. And you are in this service or you are connecting with us online. You want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to be part of that kingdom. You want to be born in that kingdom. Please put one hand in your chest and lift the other hand. In case you've made the decision before, but like me, many years ago, you were not sure, not sure whether you are born again. You've given your life. You've taken it back. Now you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You can also make that decision now. Put one hand in your chest and lift the other hand. And please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and Savior today, and I ask that you come into my life. I will serve you all the days of my life. I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you were raised on the third day. I ask that you fill me with your spirit. I confess you as Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, for your sons and daughters who are making this decision, I declare today that your life enters into them. Now they are born of God. They are snatched from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And they are filled with your power and with your grace. They will stand and they will fulfill destiny. And the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified in their lives. Thank you, amazing Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I said, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. If you made a decision for Jesus, you said that prayer with me. I'll just give you a card. Please fill the card and leave it on your seat. Uh, you give it to any of our officials. I want to send you materials that will help you in your newfound faith. And because you made this decision now, you need to be trained so that you understand how the kingdom works. Praise the Lord. If you did join us in that prayer online, please send us a mail, um, info at whiteolive.org or testimony at whiteolive.org. We want to send you materials that will help you in your newfound faith and we want to help you to grow you know, in this new decision that you made. Congratulations, we're excited. This is the best decision you can make in your life. And we are sure your transformation has just started. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.